For the past few decades, if you've worked in data, you've likely heard of these elusive holy grails of data, right? Like these things that data teams and data individuals have been chasing, but it feels like very few people actually ever get. And if they did ever get to it, it was at some other job. The data world has a few of them and some of them are real like i've seen them in practice and some of them are really a combination of like marketing and sales that are just meant to make you buy a product when i first came into the data world it was tableau selling self-service analytics and that term actually is still very popular today and it makes sense right like hey wouldn't you want your end users to be able to access data and not ask you for every gosh darn data request but let's not dive too deep into it let's just start uh, listing out some of these holy grails that i think people have been chasing for a long time but let's start with the first one being self-service analytics and i really feel like this term became very popular somewhere in like 2013 to 2015 and it was very heavy at least for me in tableau but that could also just be like that's when i started in the data world for all i know Maybe business objects was also selling that exact same term. But generally the idea is right, like, hey, we're in our current state, we have to reach out to the data team. It takes a long time. How do we kind of get them out of the way, right? So you'll spend time, you'll have the data team, you'll have the business team. You'll spend time trying to map out terms, understand, you know, okay, when some, one person needs one term, what does it mean? You'll try to mock up some dashboards that'll hopefully help people, especially in the old ways, right? Like we only use dashboards. Now it'll just be agents getting all your answers. You build those dashboards, you deploy them. And then in a perfect world, right? You maybe do some lunch and learns to teach people how to do it. And then people use it and they filter everything and they never come to bug you with a question again, unless it's really deep, right? Like now they're just, you're just releasing new features onto this dashboard, adding new things. People use it all the time. No VP ever has a problem. They never need to reach out to you and ask you how to use a filter or anything like that. Now, generally the first problem I realized in this whole process is that very few people define what self-service analytics is, right? At least not for their company, right? Because it can mean a lot of different things, right? We're now in a place where it could mean possibly just asking a question to an agent. I've seen problems with that, plenty of problems with that, but like that's the idea, right? And that's the goal. But in the past, I, it was something around like, hey, maybe you can go to a dashboard and filter what you need. Um, maybe you can drill down a little bit and, and answer some of those specific questions. And if not, you can just export it to Excel. Reddit, there's a whole thread on this. You can say, what the hell is self-service analytics? Uh, I can put a link below if that's helpful for you guys. But there's a few answers that are definitely pretty funny. Here's one of the first ones where it's, uh, it's a kind of analytics where you don't have to ask the BI developer to deliver your specific report because you need to add two more columns. You can do it yourself. Basically, all the main BI tools are self-serving, meaning the users can create their own visualizations and answer the questions without the BI. And BI is just taking care of the data and building general reports. Sounds good in theory, but in the real world, it's more like people will create one to two charts and the rest, they will bother you. So yeah, like basically usually what ends up happening, right? Like maybe they'll try to create a few charts, but again, if this is a VP, they're not. They're just going to ask you to build more charts or ask you to add new columns. There's a few other good answers there you can, you can look through. So generally some of the problems that you run into, right, especially before LLMs was some users would be okay with digging into dashboards, but others would get frustrated because they just want the answer. They're not technical at all. They just want the answer. Many users just wanted data in Excel, right? Like there's a lot of that. Can we just get that in Excel? Other users would realize they also want to like double check the data, ensure it's like accurate, which would require them to go to the data warehouse anyways, or source system just to make sure it was you know, accurate to their knowledge. And still others would have dozens more questions now, right? Like, okay, great. We know this number. Now we have lots more questions and we, you need to answer them, right? Which is good in some ways, right? You want them to ask more questions, but now it makes your life harder. And now it's great because we have a whole other sort of marketing that's kind of like anti uh, dashboards, but you look at their products and it's kind of still dashboards. So it's like, Hey, we're not Power BI or Tableau. We're better because we know you hate Power BI or Tableau because it doesn't give you exactly what you need. And again, this isn't selling to technical people this is selling to business people you have to understand kind of who they're selling to you do not buy these tools business people buy these tools um, or at least they're the ones who will sign the check and then make you use them now if you are trying to honestly take on a self-service analytics project some sort of that here's some things that you probably will need to have in place one make sure you clearly define what self-service means like the business has their own notion and it's not the one you have probably define what it means to them like hey you will be able to do xyz you won't be able to do this other thing, right? Just be clear with them. Two, have well thought out semantics, right? That doesn't mean you have to have a whole semantic layer, but at the very least, tell them, hey, what does the customer mean? This is what we mean by customer. This is what we mean by ARR, this metric. If you're lucky, hopefully you have a business side that trusts the data team to set these terms. Because if you let the business team define those terms and then you, you define your own terms, it's gonna be chaos when you actually let them do their own self-service analytics. Do 
plan to spend some time training the business team and figuring out what gaps they have because I promise you it seems simple to you however simple Tableau or Power BI or whatever tool you're using Sigma, Omni, plan for it to be harder and you should still expect some level of ad hoc requests right like don't don't think that's gone but that's at least a good way to get started on your self-service journey. Next, the next kind of holy grail is being data-driven or becoming data-driven, which in all fairness is the reason many of us have jobs, right? Like that notion, that holy grail that we're all chasing is why many of us have jobs because everyone wants to be data-driven and they're trying to figure out how to do it. And some people are good. Most people are struggling to do it. And there are multiple reasons why companies are struggling to do it. One, they don't have control of their data or they only have access to a small piece of the data. So you can't really become data-driven. Two, even if they have a decent amount of data that is easy to get to, easy to use in some sort of centralized data warehouse, the company just prefers going with their gut. A lot of companies just want to go with their gut. They want to trust what they know. Three, maybe they have data accessible, right? Like, great, you have all your data accessible. But the business and the data team just fail to communicate, so they never actually know what to do. They're not aligned. Or maybe you have, again, you are, have great accessibility to data, and you have a lot of people who are data savvy, and you've got the business aligned. But also, you have certain people that have goals, and they kind of just want to do what they want, so they make the data say what they want, because they're data savvy, and they can make the data do that. And so they just take it and use it to push their own goals. All of these can be real, right? Like you, this is there are many struggles for companies why being data driven is hard. And even when your data says certain things, like an example of kind of maybe it tricking you, right? There's the classic example from Jeff Bezos where he was talking about kind of Amazon and they had some metrics that showed that customers were waiting less than 60 seconds when they called some 1-800 number. However, they basically decided to test that. Jeff's like, hey, let's test that in a meeting. And I dialed the 1-800 number and called customer service. And we just waited in silence. <laughs> for the, for the, what did it turn out to be? Like oh, it was minutes? really yeah. long. More than 10 minutes, I think. Oh, wow. Leading him to come up with this kind of saying. So I think this was from uh, a podcast that I heard. We basically said, you know, when the data and the anecdotes disagree, the anecdotes are usually right. And it doesn't mean you just slavishly go follow the anecdotes. Then it means you go examine the data because it's usually not that the data is being miscollected. It's usually that you're not measuring the right thing. And again, you can take that a few different ways. I'm not necessarily 100% agreeing with it, but I think there's something to be said where if you hear a bunch of things, right? Like for how long have you been hearing? Maybe from your friends that the economy has been doing not great. And now it feels like the economy is finally hitting the fan, but like it's been a while of, I've been watching for a long time, for example. I've been hearing a lot of my friends tell me either they're losing jobs or they've been kind of pulling back probably for the last two years, right? Like there's been some rumblings. And honestly, if you looked at the data, there was also some of that as well different discussion but yet the data seemed to be saying something different the economy was doing well so what's the reality right there's a lot of different things that can be going on and you have to kind of just measure the right things and it's very hard to be data driven because again you can make data say a lot of things next the next goal is finding a single source of truth right like like everyone even to this day like that's the goal it's like we want to build a single source of truth we're gonna build a data warehouse a data lake house it will be the single source of truth and for some companies, it really is. I've talked to several companies, especially newer companies, that have this opportunity to build a single source of truth. But the problem is, data still tends to live in silos, right? You have some data in one, like I had one company that had one of their data warehouses in Europe, another one in America for various reasons. And they were literally having to like port over data from both of them to each other so that they could kind of do reporting. Right. And that's a smaller company. That was like a hundred million dollar company. Talk about billion dollar companies. Talk about companies that have multiple acquisitions. You know, you got eight acquisitions. You got to bring all that data together. It's very, very hard to build a single source of truth. Um, not to mention you have someone who's doing all their reporting off of Excel. And so single source of truth is also one of those things that just feel like you're constantly chasing it. And some people, again, it's easier for, I think, newer companies to do it. But as your company grows, it can definitely become harder. You have shadow data teams come up. Someone builds their own data warehouse somewhere. Um, you kind of have things just spread up and you kind of are constantly trying to rebring it back in. I will say this is definitely one of the ones that like I've seen a little more winning with recently, right? Like before it was, I think, hard. I'm seeing more companies kind of get to a point where they have a single source of truth. And then the challenge becomes, yeah, but we're letting everyone kind of build on top of it. Marketing is doing their own thing. Sales is doing their own thing. And yeah, it's all in one place, but now it's kind of really messy. So that's a different problem altogether. So again, in order to like actually have practical steps to get these holy grails, here's a few things. One, set expectations, right? Like define what things mean. Define what you mean when you say self-service analytics. Define what you mean when you say single source of truth. What are you actually going to take care of in there? Two, prioritize incremental wins. You know, you can't just think that, hey, tomorrow we're going to be data driven, right? Tell people kind of what that means. So you're like, hey, I think for maybe the next few decisions in a certain area, you don't have to like 
every decision your company makes has to be data driven. Be like, hey, let's try for the next three months trying to be more data driven just in marketing. And specifically, let's try to figure out is there information we can figure out about like ad spend? Because that's usually a great place to save money. Like ad spend. Can we reduce how much we're spending in ads by figuring out what ads are actually delivering dollars uh, back to us? And right, and just focus on that and figure out processes and methods that actually deliver results and help you execute on a business side and not just like deliver dashboards and reports. Create feedback loops, right? Like you need to get the business involved. If you deliver a dashboard, if you deliver some sort of result, actually see if they follow through with it, right? Like if you give them a number and they're supposed to make a decision on it, figure out if they do that, right? If they don't, right, they're not being data-driven, figure out why. Like what is the reason that you're not trusting this number or you don't feel like you should make a decision off of it, right? Should we get you a different number? Do you just not have confidence with it? Do we need to give you different, you know, a different format? Really kind of make sure you're building those muscles in to like have feedback come in. And really there's a bunch more you could do, but I think that just gets you started. That builds you that baseline, that foundation that can help you kind of move forward. Truly a lot has changed since I joined the data world and from a lot of people and things are kind of getting better slowly. I think the way I like to think about it is we're kind of in this spiral where things are getting closer and closer to the final target, right? Self-service analytics is getting closer compared to when I first started and probably 10 years before that, it's even closer than that. But it is kind of like, uh, just not there yet, almost there yet, like to this perfect envisioned world of self-service analytics. And we're slowly getting there. We're slowly getting better. Uh, you have to realize what is possible and what isn't, right? And be clear with your business, what is possible, what is not. I think the big thing about these terms is a lot of them are driven or focused on the business and selling the business products and ideas more than they're purely focused on uh, the tech side. So it's important to figure out what does the business think? How have they been sold this idea? And what can you actually deliver? So that's my advice to you if you're trying to hit these holy grails, these realities that, you know, you can get there, but it will take a lot of work. With it, guys, I want to say thanks so much for watching this video and I'll see y'all in the next one. Thanks all. Goodbye.